Welcome to this tutorial that will show you how to set up and run a directed energy deposition simulation and then to view the results. In the simulation utility, start with the simulation menu in the upper left corner of the user interface and select New. In the dialog that opens, click the directed energy deposition button, noting that it's a technical preview, and then click Create Simulation. The next step is to import a laser vector LSR file. Remember that to start a powder bed fusion simulation, we imported an STL file. For a DED simulation, the LSR file simulates the motion of all the individual scan vectors and contains some information about the heat source pads. If we open the LSR file, we see a standard structure. Text labels across the top describe the entries. Each laser vector has one line of data. First entry on the left is the laser power, 450 watts in this case. Next three values express the laser vector in XYZ format in relation to the build plate. So 0, 0, minus 1 here means that the laser is pointing straight down. The next three values are the starting XYZ coordinates of the laser pass. And then the next three values are the ending XYZ coordinates of the laser pass. The next entry is half of the bead width. And then is the laser velocity, typically in millimeters per second. The last entry is the time to activate the laser path. After importing the LSR file, we click the machine button on the home tab. And in the dialog, we can review and adjust the absorption efficiency, which typically ranges between 30 and 40 percent for a laser system. We leave the default settings here and click the build plate button. On the properties tab we can set thermal and mechanical boundary conditions. For mechanical constraints there are two options. Simply supported, meaning that three corners of the build plate are fixed in a total of six degrees of freedom and cantilevered, in which the minus x end of the plate is fixed, leaving the other end free to deflect. We choose the cantilevered option, then click the Size tab and set the build plate size as follows. Length in the x direction of 60 millimeters, a y length of 10 millimeters, a z length of 5 millimeters. Click Operating Conditions at and set the convection coefficient to 10 to the minus 6 or 1e minus 0, 0,5. This convection is applied to all three surfaces in the model. Click Mesh Settings and we'll choose the default 1 for element per heat source radius, which controls mesh density. Then Fine Layers Below Heat Source specifies the number of layers that are kept fine and not adapted below the heat source. A few layers are required to capture the evolution of plastic strain, but once the build moves up higher, the layers are eligible for coarsening. We'll leave this at the level of 4. And then Adaptivity Levels specifies the allowed number of coarsening levels for the elements. We'll set this value to 2. Now click Mesh Preview and save the project in a suitable location. Load the mesh when it's available and we can inspect it. Click Solver Settings to see that you can set the analysis type and we'll leave it at the default Thermal and Mechanical. Then click Solve to start the simulation. The runtime for a DED simulation is governed by the size of the heat source, with a smaller radius producing a denser mesh, and also by the amount of material deposited. In this example, we have only two laser passes, so the simulation results are ready quite soon. Load the results when available, and first we'll view the temperature results. Open Plot Settings 
and set the displacement scale to 10 to magnify the displacement results. As we play through these results, remember that the near end of the build plate is fixed. We see the far end of the plate deflect upwards. We can follow the two deposition passes and see that at the end, when the material cools, contracts, and plastifies, slightly higher temperatures remain in the part, causing the up upward deflection of the build plate. Turn on the Cauchy stress to verify this. Also, open the plot settings again and change the range setting to global. And sure enough, at the end of the build, we see elevated stress levels. So we have just demonstrated the entire DED simulation process from importing an LSR file through setting up the simulation parameters to viewing the results.